G'day guys, welcome back, Danny Dot right here, we are currently swishing our way across Easter weekend, um, I don't know if it's also Easter everywhere else in the world, <laughs> I know that sounds so ignorant, I'm so sorry, uh, it's just one of those things that when I lived in Sydney, um, and I left the Queenstown bubble, there were people that I was working with in Sydney and they were actually saying to me that, you know, we're we think Easter is for us in, you know, Oceania, New Zealand, Australia. <laughs> Sometimes it's not the same weekend as in, everywhere else in the world. So here I am in New Zealand celebrating Easter. Uh, we had Good Friday yesterday and, and Easter Sunday and Monday, you know, coming up. Hope the Easter Bunny can find you all. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about the worldwide listeners. I don't know if the Easter Bunny is going to find... If it's the same, I don't know. Um, how is everyone? How's your week been? What's the goss? I've had so much feedback about my most previous podcast. It's actually surpassed listeners for Danny Dot number one, which just goes to show people want to know about health and wellness. Um, I don't think I really had a big story about what I was trying to say there in that health and wellness podcast. I think it was more everyone's journey is different. The thing is, is to keep at it. I just wanted to show you that I had had some maybe not best experiences, but it didn't change my perception of joining a gym. And trust me, I threatened to quit my gym maybe once a month, <laughs> but I, I won't. <laughs> it's just um, sometimes things happen that you know, don't make you feel motivated and that's okay. So I don't really know what the direction of this podcast is today. I actually had just put out on my social media that I was home today and I had a bit of a husky raspy voice. Um, so if anyone wanted a phone call, I'm here because I was going to record a podcast. But then as I was doing the dishes from breakfast, my mind started swirling and I was like, oh no, I need to say a few things. <laughs> and also I've had a lot of feedback that say that like my past stories and wisdom are super interesting and obviously people are taking away a lot from those. But people also want to know what I've been up to like weekly in my week, not something that happened five years ago. So I feel like this past week, as weird as it was and as short as it was, which short weeks always feel terribly long when you're working, weird stuff happened. And I kind of was just blown away and thought, well, okay, maybe Danny Dot Podcast people want to hear about what happened this past week because it's sort of set, it's very unsettling. And I think um, probably it's best that I talk about it and then I can get it off my chest and people can come back to me with their thoughts and everything else. No, <laughs> but yeah, if that's how you just want to like hear about things, I'm all for it. That's fine. I, there's no right or wrong way to doing a podcast and I'm definitely getting that as feedback. Like um, I don't have any direction and someone at my uh, work actually said to me last week, what's the theme of your podcast? And I was like, there's not going to be a theme. We thought about doing it all about wine, but at the end of the day, like, nah, <laughs> there's more substance to Danny Dot than just alcohol um, so yeah we'll just sort of play it by ear and if I feel like chucking a podcast out there was something that may have happened in the past week so be it um, speaking of which this past week was crazy uh, my star sign which I'm not big on crystals and star signs and everything like that I just get an email once a week that kind of outlines a few things and it was kind of startling because it indicated that someone was going to come back into my life that I hadn't seen for a while and I should probably open them with like, sorry, not open them, greet them with open arms. And I was so panicked. I'm not even going to lie. I went and I got my hair colored. I like straightened my hair, which I never do. When you work from home, you barely brush your teeth. <laughs> but um, I decided I wasn't going to look like a bin bag for the week and I'm going to put a bit of effort in and see who would actually come into my life this week. I think as of Thursday, it happened. They've come back into my li life and uh, I'm not sad about it. <laughs> it's not a love interest. It's just a really great friend who um, it's crazy my algorithm of life but this is how this happened when I talked last week about gyms and stuff like that and I touched on central fitness here in Cromwell 
It was actually the gym owner, Johnny, who um, I managed to bump into on Thursday in extremely um, sad circumstances. But I put out on social media, I'm going to have an Easter drink at the pub if anyone wants to come down. It'll be really great to catch up before everyone disperses for Easter break because my friends have all, you know, (laughs) got lives and they want to just, you know, go everywhere. So, um that was something that we just sort of played by ear. And so I'm sitting at the pub, it's about half past eight, and lo and behold, some really smartly dressed guys in suits come walking in the door. And I was just like, holy shit, that's my old trainer from the the gym, Johnny, who I haven't seen and I don't see often. He has multiple gyms across the South Island, so... He's always here, there, and everywhere, but I was actually under the impression he was in another country getting married, so <laughs> I ran up to him all excited that he was finally hitched, and um, he was like, no, 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 I've been I've been here, there, and everywhere, rah, rah. I thought, oh, so why are you here now? And at, at the pub, because I never see him at the pub. He's like a health junkie. He's always out on his mountain bike, just, you know, carving it up. And he was just telling me that a friend of mine who did the 12-week challenge uh, August 2020, her mum passed away. And I actually knew multiple people at this funeral on Thursday. I didn't know whose funeral it was. I just knew there was a funeral. And once that came, like, it just clicked in my mind whose mum that was. I'm telling you now, it's... I'm super grateful to have had a couple of drinks before I found that out or else I would have just burst into tears because I kind of feel like I had this coat of armor on me that just wanted to support and be there for everyone that was there to love and support, um, you know, the person that had passed away as family and friends. Uh, so when I actually managed to catch up with the daughter of the lady who passed, she was standing right next to me and I just stood there and I was like, I don't even know what to say. What do you even say when someone's mum has just passed away of such a short-term illness? It happened so fast. I just, she turned around and she looked at me and she was like, Danny? And I said, yeah. <laughs> she just lunged in to give me a hug and all I could say to her was, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I was borderline about to burst into tears and I just stood there like, don't do it, don't do it. Just give her a hug and just support her and she had her mum's friends up on the stage singing her favorite songs I've got goosebumps talking about it now and it was like two days ago holy moly but yeah so um the young girl's husband he is a crackerjack just absolutely crazy he was standing at the bar doing Sam Booker and tequila shots and I was thinking honey this funeral started at like midday and now it's half past eight at nine years are still going and years are knocking back shots So (laughs) I was just standing there holding jackets and just, you know, um, chatting away. And it was just super, super sad circumstances to get everyone together. But there were some real familiar faces from my time at Central Fitness Gym. And Johnny, like, I actually had a deep and meaningful with him. And I said, I adore you as a trainer, but you are too soft and I need structure and motivation. So <laughs> not like major pain vibes, like, you know, um, just something a little bit more than Mr. Wax On, Wax Off, who is all about mobility and stretching and all that kind of stuff. Whereas I'm here for weights and cardio and things that make my body shape into this, uh I don't even know what shape it goes into. <laughs> Titans and tones. Um, but yeah, I, so I didn't threaten to leave the gym for a millionth time or anything, but I just needed him to know that um, I sometimes do drift away and I think, oh, this this isn't working for me. I come to, You shouldn't have to walk into a gym and be like, why am I here? You know, people go in there with such massive timetables and schedules and I go – at the one time of the day where there's no one in there (laughs) and I just fuck around for an hour and then I leave again. So, um, yeah, I'm not saying I'm going to see more of him at the gym as say he's a busy businessman with his partner. Who's also, you know, they're in this together. They, they do this gym stuff really well, but 
I just, yeah, I sort of fumbled a little bit and I was like, oh, love your gym, not motivated, don't want to go. <laughs> but no, so we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not going to leave it. I just, yeah, I had to be honest. <laughs> so uh, it was good. It was good catching up with him. And I do think it was him that I was supposed to sort of loop back to, which is wild because of last week's pod. And now he knows I have a podcast so that was weird as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Nothing's going to change. It's all sort of going to stay the same, but I just needed to be honest. Um, Other than that, well, what else happened at the pub on Thursday? I don't know what's been going on lately, but I've got this really weird like um, thing and I just sort of like don't know what's going on. But you know when you kind of fancy, like, you know, fancy is a bit of a strange word, but... <laughs> When, I don't know what's going on lately, I've sort of been thinking, like, give certain guys chances, and it's really weird for me to say, because I'm, I'm never like that about anyone, I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> but for some strange reason, there's, like, been more than two guys at the pub at any one time who I have been getting to know uh, and on Thursday, four of them were in the same room together, and I'm standing there like, what is happening? <laughs> I know that it was, like, a thing to go to the pub before the long weekend, but to have, um, you know, all your favourites, do you call them your favourites? The flirty ones, the ones that you want to sort of push on and see if you would stretch out and go on a date with, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they were all there at the same time, which is why I actually wanted to mention something that happened maybe, I'm thinking 2017, 2018. I don't have any photos of this, and I'm someone that has photos of everything. Like, I got 20,000 in my phone at the moment. Um, I was naughty in Australia, and I did have a bit of a Tinder meetup way back when this was a thing to, I think... I didn't think I was the first person to do this, but I definitely had an idea at the time, and I have seen other people do this since then, to get everyone that you've been flirting with on Tinder into the one bar and um, just sort of work the room. <laughs> Not as an intentional date, but as a, like, come to the pub and I'll meet up with you for a drink kind of thing. So... For myself, it was a Friday night. I'm so sure it was a Friday before St. Patrick's Day. And it was the Stock Exchange in Brisbane, which has a really great open bar rooftop thing. It's just, it was one of my favorites when I was over there. I don't even, is it still open now? I think in the pandemic, it had a bit of a situation where I don't know if it actually lived. <laughs> anyway, um, we were up there and it was like two for $10 cocktails. Oh, Gosh, it was so much fun. And obviously, after the work day, we always went to the Criterion across the street from Suncorp, um, Brisbane Square, had a couple of drinks there, and then we went, walked up to Stock Exchange. My friends didn't know that I did this. And I had said, oh, you know, about 8.30, I've got five, six guys that I've been talking to on Tinder coming to Stock Exchange. They've all been working in the city as well. I being the typical Danny Dot that I am, got so drunk. <laughs> I had never been to um, the bathrooms in the stock exchange, which sounds really bad, I know. But I just don't, when I go out, if you know me, you know that I don't go to the toilet that often. I'm like, I've got like a, um, what do they call it? A festival bladder where you just don't need to pee for 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Um, and so I I never knew where the toilets were at Stock Exchange. So I went to go find them. And lo and behold, I opened a door and I popped out the side of Stock Exchange. And I wasn't allowed back in because I was too intoxicated. <laughs> so, um, yeah, whoops. Um, I had left all my friends on the rooftop. No one knew that that was what I was planning, so no one knew to tell any guys, and no one knew what the guys looked like anyway. They were essentially there to meet me. And I, yeah, went to go to the toilet and popped out the side of Stock Exchange and was not allowed back up there because I was intoxicated. My bad. Didn't do that again. <laughs> but now I, I sort of look around the room at the pub and I'm like, 
is it because I know more people now that like I'm going to the Vic more and I'm actually like enjoying myself and I feel really like supported because it's one thing to go to your local bar and it's like seedy old men and everything else like that but to actually like enjoy yourself and be like well that person's interesting and that person wants to dance with you and that one will buy you a drink if you look like you don't know what you're doing which is that happens all the time <laughs> but no it's um definitely a vibe at the moment and I'm really enjoying myself so and I never say that which is wild so um yeah and then I actually caught up with a friend <clears throat> as well and they were saying that you should do like a statistic um and make people like give their thoughts and feedback on like you know funny cringe moments or like x um which is interesting because I know that a team of mine on uh, at work is actually doing X of the week and gosh there were some funny ones floating around um, but I had put on my social media about a fortnight ago a really random statistic which it's still going people are still talking about it now and that's that men prefer to face the shower when showering and females face the wall and I just wanted to check in with my like barely 300 followers on Instagram and just sort of see if that was the same for us. Uh, <coughs> sorry. And um, it was, but people's reasoning was really funny. Like guys were just being a little bit typically gross and saying that they can't touch themselves while they're facing the shower head. <laughs> that was gross. Um, and females were having a bit of a laugh saying that they only face away when they have to wash their hair, which is, that kind of makes sense. I can understand why you would do that. Uh, then there's those weird people that face like the wall that's not the door and not the shower head, but just the wall. I don't know. I have like a half circle shower, so um, the... It's like a bubble thing with a sliding door. I don't like it. I feel really claustrophobic in this stupid thing, but <laughs> it made me think about it. And then I asked mum and she was, you know, she agreed that you only face away from the shower head when you wash your hair. I don't know. Do people just stand there and just face the shower head the whole time? See, I'm six foot three. So I've got to be kind of careful because the shower head sort of sometimes scorches my chest. <laughs> I come out and I'm like, ow, <laughs> I've burnt myself. <laughs> but yeah, um, I just sort of want to touch on social media a little bit because a few people got wind that I used to work with Vodafone. And Vodafone was such a wild time. Like, it was so early on. iPhones were like iPhone number one, um, curved backs had the size of the storage on the back um the IMEI was out there in the open it wasn't on the sim tray <laughs> and um I think was it Sony Xperia was very close second to having a really weird smartphone and people I've, I've never run away from social media I've never deactivated an account I've never got the shits with anyone and been like nah you know I'm off I hate social media for me, I think when we had to do heaps of like modules and stuff on safe social media and how best to get around certain, you know, bits and pieces, I've just always been super consistent. If I don't like you, I'll cull you. Like I'll just delete you. If I really hate you, I'll delete you. <laughs> but um, you, like it's one of those things where if you wake up in the morning and you grab your phone and you start looking at social media and that one thing that is repetitive that bothers you, like remove it. Or that one person posts something every morning that you just think, why am I looking at this? Mute them. There are tools within social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. You can do all those really great things where the other person doesn't essentially know that you've muted them or you don't see their stuff anymore. You'll still be their friend if you have to be, but you can mute them. And I think, you know, I do a cull, like I get rid of people maybe once a year. It's not really get rid of as such. I just think that like if you're not interacting or you're just stalking or whatever, why are you here? <laughs> you know, why are we friends? Um, and I do say this to like friends and family quite a lot. Social media is not like a, a actual 
it's a, it's, it's a facade as such, but I wouldn't say that if I'm not talking to you on social media that I wouldn't talk to you in real life, you know? So, like, I I do have an auntie who I just absolutely despise, and I did sort of say if she actually wanted to communicate with me again, <clears throat> it, it wouldn't have to be via social media. Like, not every form of communication has to happen via social media. There is still calling and texting. So I think... We all just need to really reevaluate what's happening on social media at the moment because post pandemic, people think that, oh, my life's not interesting. I don't need to post anything. The weirdest thing about my social media is if I post something about my brother, <laughs> everyone loves it. And I don't know why because he doesn't talk. <laughs> Tom is like um, this silent assassin. He's just this crazy bearded lumberjack who barely has to speak two words and everyone bloody loves him <laughs> i post a photo of it myself oh yeah a couple of likes cool beans tom in the photo heaps i don't know why i've never known why <laughs> and i just think oh this is weird but um yeah uh, i think i just wanted to put it out there that if you wanted to just reevaluate what you think is social media and what's working for you and everything else. Have a look at the pages that you're interacting with or the groups that you're in and see, have you grown or do you still find those things interesting? I'm a really terrible example because on Instagram, I think I'm following like 3000 people. If you post a story, I might not see it because there's probably, I don't know, 2,999 stories ahead of you. But also, if you're not around me, there's something weird about how social media knows if that person's near you or whatever, and their story goes to the top of the pile. And it's not a... I I don't feel like that's a great perception of me because just because I'm not looking at your story or I don't see your social media, it's not... I'm still your friend, (laughs) I've just got a whole lot of other stuff going on that, you know, I've decided makes me happy that I want to see when I first wake up. That's not an indication of what you're posting, um, but just I've done it for so long that that's what my phone's, you know, decided to put at the top of the pile. Um, So if I have dropped off from, you know, seeing anything that you want to share or whatever, it's I haven't done it intentionally. (laughs) I've actually just decided, like, I don't know. It, it hurt. It hurt me a lot when I first left Australia to see my Australian friends doing things without me, and so I just sort of was like, "Nah." But I didn't mute anyone. I just, you know, went about my day. And my Cromwell girlfriends, all their stuff comes up to the front of my my um, posts and stuff because they around me all the time. But um, yeah, I just sort of wanted to indicate that was actually what was going on. But I'm still here. <laughs> I actually on my social media, on my Insta story, had for the past year, only this year I'm not doing it, um, a continual like news, memes, funny shit, stuff that would make everyone laugh. And that was my way of interacting in my indirect sort of friendly manner. Because even if I wasn't able to really communicate and have a catch up and all that kind of stuff, just know that like, you know, I want you to see this. I want you to, you know, that those are the types of important things at the time. <clears throat> it's only now that I've decided, you know, what makes me happy is um, having those actual conversations and, you know, catching up and seeing where everyone's at. The The weirdest thing about it all is that at the start of the year when I decided that I was going to save money and actually, like, not be as busy or as social and stuff. And like, I feel like I've established these really great connections with all my friends here in Cromwell is that everyone else did the same thing. (laughs) And I'm like, guys, Oh, I feel like I haven't seen some people since like December last year, but everyone's decided to be hermits, save money. And I think we all just know where we stand as friends. Um, so yeah, it's crazy. But another thing is that, People don't know, my Snapchat story while I was in Australia went nonstop for four years, nonstop for four years. There were times that I'd go on a night out in Australia and 
that Snapchat story would go for 10 minutes. Easy. Easy. Um, before you'd be at the end of my Snapchat story. And that Snapchat story, there would always be something on my story for four years straight. Oh, my friends, they were a lucky bunch. <laughs> I think when I went to Pearl Harbor um, in Hawaii, I actually managed to make my Snapchat story go for 25 minutes when I went on board the USS Arizona and I like Snapchatted the whole thing. Like, I should have just gone Instagram live or something stupid, but I was like, oh, you know, this is this ship spilling oil out. It has done since the 80s, rah, rah, rah. Like, it was history, and I felt like I shared that with, you know, all my people on Snapchat. But I don't know. I think as you get older, no, that's a bad sort of example because I'm not really allowed to say that I'm getting older because my friends don't allow it. But as you sort of, like, mature, we'll say that, um, what gets shared becomes questionable where you just think, should I be sharing that? I've always stayed like super consistent. You're always going to get the same shit from me. Funny, funny stuff, uh, recipes, which reminds me I'm actually making um, a TikTok recipe for dinner tonight. I'm super excited. Um, and just sort of like, if, if I go quiet, <laughs> yeah, there, actually there was, there's been a few times I've gone quiet and people have asked me if I'm okay. <laughs> But that's because I'm always talking and always posting. So maybe when I'm not posting and I'm super quiet, um, which is kind of now, I feel like I'm barely posting anything, then, you know, that's the time where I want to communicate as adults and I don't feel like social media needs to be this really great grey cloud over what, you know, needs to be posted and what doesn't and everything. Um. Another example is actually my Facebook. Every month for two years, at the start of the month, I would do like a rundown of what I would be doing for that month if anyone wanted to participate. I couldn't do that in Cromwell because we were too spontaneous. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was a really great way of interacting with people and saying, oh, I'm going to be at this event if you're going to go, if you're going to go to the Crusaders game at Suncorp, I'll be there as well. Um, now I'm just here in Cromwell and, like, I don't go anywhere. I'm a hermit through and through. Like I'll literally just go to the gym and the pub if you're lucky. <laughs> um, and that's about it. So I, I feel like I've become uh, quiet. I want to catch up more. I want to talk. It's all about discussing what's going on. Um, yeah, well, I feel like people are going to ask me what this bloody TikTok dinner tonight is. You know, when you make a stir fry, like say, no, when you buy like, I don't know, chicken cashew from a Chinese takeaway and the chicken just tastes really good and you just don't know how, why, or what, what is this? Like, <laughs> you know, I've learned about velveting meat, which sounds horrific, but it's, I don't know, it's a different way to cook meat and I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to make a really cool stir fry and see if it works. So I'm super excited. Because there's nothing worse than having a stir fry and this um, sauce doesn't, like, marry the protein. <laughs> oh, oh, look at me. <laughs> the protein, the chicken, the beef, the tofu, I don't care. I don't know what you're into. But, um, yeah, and I haven't got mum here. She's uh, She's gone to go paint houses with Tom and the son. So I will do something fancy. Um but yeah, I feel like that's that's sort of what I wanted to discuss today on the podcast, just a bit of an update as to what's been going on this week and um, social media. If you don't like seeing it, unfollow it. If you don't like seeing this person, mute them. <laughs> it's not hard. <laughs> I swear, I promise on my life, you'll enjoy so much more I mean, I go through phases where I like things to do with gym and cooking and positive quotes and all those kinds of things that make me feel fulfilled and fill my cup, which is what a good friend of mine always says, have you filled your cup, Danny? Um, and then I'll go along and just un, uh, unfollow and do all those things when I've got something else. Another one that's really big for me is following... Um, Aeroplane spotting groups. <laughs> that's, a, that's a new fact for you. 
I am obsessed with plane spotting. I'm like this weird 35-year-old that just loves aeroplanes. Um, and that just makes me so happy when I wake up and someone's seen some really great monster in the sky and I'm like, yes, that won't happen here in Cromwell, but um, I love seeing that they saw that. <laughs> But yeah, have a wee think about what your what your social media looks like. Get into a good algorithm, and I, and maybe it might you know make your um, attitude and behaviour just sort of lift where you feel a bit more positive energy. Whoa, look at that! Yeah, am I feeling deep or what? <laughs> but nah. As always, take care, everyone. If anyone wants to reach out, I am always here for a chat and I am loving seeing your um, feedback and questions for me. It's one of those things where you go into a podcast with an idea and I promise you, as quick as I'm going to like end this, I will still sit here and go, shit, I should have touched on this. I should have said that. This could have been said better. Um... But as I say, there's no professional way of doing this. It's just getting it out there and making people think and doing things better and making people feel good and positive, you know. I'm here, like, it's one of those things. I was only saying this the other day. Make yourself, like, warranted to deserve my friendship. It's, you know... I just, I hate it when people just think, oh, we're just acquaintances. In my eyes, if you think that you're my friend, you probably are. We're not just, you know, acquaintances or whatever, but don't make me waste my time because I have too much self-worth and respect and love, you know, catching up with my followers and having yarns with people. If you want to add me as a friend, add me as a friend, um, if I accept you, we're friends. And that's easy as. That's as easy as it could be. <laughs> Please have a really great long weekend. Be safe. Um, I know I've just been at the supermarket myself and I almost had two car accidents and I decided I had to go home before I, you know, broke the horn. Um, but, yeah, hope to hear from you all um, and I look forward to recording the next podcast in the not-too-distance future. Bye.